you all know by now that I'm genuinely a positive person here on United People's TV. I always try and look for the best angles to try and bring positive news to Manchester United. But in this video, I've really got to get something off my chest. Something that's been there for a long, long time. This is not coming off the back of a frustrating, let's be honest, start to the transfer window for Manchester United fans with everything that's going on with Frankie de Jong. But I think Frankie de Jong could be a transformative signing for Manchester United. But I think Ten Hag is doomed to failure at Manchester United if we do not resolve our issues inside the defensive midfield situation. All right? And this is not the first summer I've said this. It's not the second summer I've said this. Hell, it's not even the third summer I've said this. But United cannot ignore the elephant in the room anymore. And no signing of de Jong will avert my attention from what I still consider to be the biggest problem inside this Manchester United team. And I want to explain that in this video. I apologise if you think this is a bit negative, but this is something I truly feel is the case. And this is coming off the back of Laurie Whitwell's comments this morning in The Athletic, saying he was asked, look, what is the likelihood of Manchester United signing a genuine defensive midfielder this summer? It is a position the United have needed to enhance for years and is an even more pressing requirement with Nemanja Matic department. But that comment there, money will dictate whether th that specific signing is made, however. And genuinely, that blows my mind. Because Frankie de Jong will be a transformative signing for Manchester United. But this is the issue, right? And this is the crux of the problem. So let me please explain this. De Jong will come in and solve one problem. Manchester United have got two major issues at the club. One in possession, one out of possession. Frankie de Jong comes in and massively changes our ability in possession. In terms of control and tempo, that's where Frankie de Jong comes in. Receiving the ball from the defenders, looking up, making sure United can recycle possession, making sure United can just pass it round for a minute or two. Slow the game down when we need to, speed the game up when we need to. That's where Frankie de Jong comes in and will make such a big difference and is an incredible signing. But him on his own, I still think will leave Manchester United with a huge hole. And that's the hole that has to be filled. And for the life of me, I don't know how Manchester United are still not looking at that as the biggest priority. And maybe this is because Eric Ten Hag isn't looking at it as the biggest priority. Maybe for him, the biggest priority is establishing that element of control. Because that's the biggest part and most important part for his system to work. But if we're looking at pre-existing issues and problems inside this Manchester United team, it's our lack of investment in defensive midfield, man. It really is at the crux of everything that we've got wrong for so many years. Take a look at the Premier League table last year. From last year, I'm sure you want to see this. We conceded 57 goals, ladies and gents. That's four more than Burnley, who got relegated. Four more. That's over double what City conceded. Over double what Liverpool conceded. And nearly double what Chelsea conceded. Manchester United were an absolute sieve last season for chances and goals. And when it comes to investment, it's not as if we haven't invested. But look where this money has gone. Let's just go back through it. Last summer transfer window, Jaden Sancho, not defensive midfielder. Varane, not defensive midfielder. Ronaldo, not defensive midfielder. I think you might see where this pattern's going to go, but I'm going to do it anyway, as Barry would say. Van der Beek, not a defensive midfielder. Diallo, no. Tellez, no. Palistri, no. Cavani, free. Also, no. Maguire, no. Fernandez, no. Wambasaka, no. James, no. Igalo, no. Walter Jackson, no. Fred, no. He's not a defensive midfielder. Delo, no. Grant, no. We go back. Lukaku, no. Finally, we found a defensive midfielder. Ah, but he's left the club now. Matic, yes, he was. Last one we signed in 2017-18 summer transfer window. Go further back. Lindelof, no. Sanchez, no. Pogba, no. Mkhitaryan, no. Bai, no. Zlatan, no. Martial, no. And Schneidlin. I tell you what, I was dead upset that that Schneidlin one didn't work out. When we signed him, I was like, we've just gone and signed one of the better, or one of the best defensive midfielders in the Premier League. I was like, we finally sorted it. But no, two of them, in the last eight transfer windows. And you're looking at what's going on and what happens in the league. Rodri, hugely important player for City. And Fernandinho. Fabinho, transformative signing for them. Kante, being at the, being at the center of everything that Chelsea have done over the last few years. Elite teams have players like that in their squads. Now, we've been linked with Ibrahim Sangade, and I'm going to be speaking to a Dutch journalist about him and about the idea that he could be joining Manchester United. 
I just feel that we can talk about Frankie de Jong all day long. And no doubt he will make Manchester United 10 times better in possession. I imagine he will also bring some ball winning capabilities to this team for sure. But there's no way that we can go through this summer again and not start a defensive midfielder, surely. Surely. Surely? I don't have any confidence in that. What I'm saying, if we're looking at this Ajax team, obviously Ten Hag built, and we look at Frenkie de Jong and Schoener and the, and, and, the, and the partnership that they had in the middle of the pitch there, and you look at what Graven Birch had done for Ajax alongside Edson Alvarez, it was, it was balanced. It was all balanced. And simply put, Fred and McTominay will not bring that sort of balance for Frankie de Jong. Fred and McTominay, out of the two, if you're looking at who could be that midfielder, probably more Fred. But Fred, when he plays deeper, we all know he's far less effective than he is going forward. And for us to really get the most out of Frankie de Jong and the qualities that he's going to bring to this team, we have to balance it with the signing alongside him that can maybe do a little bit of the dirty work. I'm not just talking about someone like Wilfred and Didi. I'm not just saying we need a pure out-and-out ball-winning midfielder. Because as true Mene showed, there are players out there, obviously he was out of our price range, and he wanted to play for Real Madrid. I think we were we were never going to get to a many, even if he would have been the best signing in that position. And he absolutely would have been. Said that at the start of the summer. And I maintain that. But United need somebody to play there alongside De Jong. We need somebody who has the ability to protect that back four. I absolutely stand by my opinion that Maguire and Varane will look like better defenders if we sign a defensive midfielder to actually, you know what, defend the midfield. Like a defensive midfielder actually has to do. And I just don't, for the life of me, see how Manchester United can really expect any sort of sustained success and growth next year if we're lining up with Fred there or McTominay there. Now, that might come back to haunt me and, I, and I'll be happy to say, look, I was, I was wrong about it. But I don't think I am. And I feel quite strongly about it because I've gone on for season after season after season after season saying, why the fuck? Are we not signing a defensive midfielder? It's not the sexy signing. It's not the glamorous signing. It's not the marquee signing. But shit, you got a big leak. What do you do? You don't ignore it year after year after year after year. You fix it. You sign somebody who can do that role. And it just, uh, the idea there, as I said, from Laurie Whitwell, the idea that money's going to dictate whether Manchester United make that signing, I think that's absolutely coming at it from the wrong perspective it shouldn't be money that dictates it it should be the fact that we conceded more goals than Burnley who got relegated last year it should be the fact that over the last eight transfer windows we have only signed two defensive midfielders neither of them at the club anymore Schneider and he left pretty damn early and Matic has now left how can we possibly go through and expect Frankie de Jong to come in and transform everything at the club if we can't get him the midfield partner that would allow him to flourish in the role that he will want to do it blows my mind. It really blows my mind. We, people are talking about Darwin Nunes for 80 million, 100 million. I'm like, really? That's not where United's problems are. United should this summer be signing two central midfielders. Someone like Frankie de Jong, whose pure focus is what he can do in possession. And we need another midfielder alongside him, whose pure focus is what he can bring to the team out of possession because out of possession is where United have been cut open for years. We can't control a game. That's where he's hopefully going to come in. And so we have more possession. So we have less reliance on, on the need for a defensive midfielder because United have got the ball more. So our defence won't be squared up against attackers as much. That should happen. But that's only one side of the coin. And in my opinion, I think Ten Hag's doomed for failure. And maybe that maybe I'm wrong. Look, may, maybe I'm thinking more about uh, what Manchester United's problems are and the holes that I think we need to fix rather than what does Ten Hag need to fix for his system to work at Manchester United. And I think from his perspective, the bigger priority there is someone, a controller, a conductor, rather than a bouncer, which is effectively what we need as well. But I think both of those together need to be like yin and yang, the perfect blend, salt and pepper, whatever you want to call it. That balance hasn't existed in Army Field for so long. And I don't think that that balance will exist with Frankie de Jong and one of these two lads. I think we'll be hoping that it would work. And it might work. But shit, I don't want hope anymore. I want the best. 
and I want United to sign a defensive midfielder. I feel pretty strongly about this. You might think that I'm going overboard, and I'm sure you'll tell me in the comments, as you always do. But this isn't this isn't a 2022 conversation. It's not a 2021 or 20. Legitimately, this is years and years and years of watching us be Donut FC. No real midfield. And of course, as I said, it's a two-sided coin. One is about what we do in possession, and one is what we do out of possession. Both of those need to be sorted this summer, and they need to be sorted with two different types of midfield signings. Franco de Jong on his own is not enough to solve that midfield situation. That's what I think. I feel pretty strongly about it, but you can let me know what you think about oh. my comments down below. Come on, United. Please, don't you dare. Don't you dare go another summer without signing a defensive midfielder. I swear to God.